Good morning and welcome to our worship service today at St. John's. There are a couple of announcements I'd like to pass along. First of all, a big thank you for the teacher appreciation that took place on Friday here at our school. Uh, lots of people came through and it was great to see everyone again uh, and to be uh, also reminded of the great blessing we have here as a Christian school. Teachers really appreciated it, so thank you for everyone who helped uh, with that. Also, a couple of uh, special things coming up. We are having our graduation and ascension service. Uh, that will be held in about 10 days on Thursday, uh, May 21st at 7 p.m. That will likely be a virtual service. Uh, and again, that'll be next Thursday. And then coming up later this week, our uh, voters recently placed a, a request for a graduate student from uh, Martin Luther College. And Martin Luther College is having their call day uh, this Saturday on May 16th. So the graduation service is at 10 a.m. And the assignments will be read. It's a virtual service. Those will be read at 11.15 a.m. this Saturday. And so anyone is able to log on and watch that streaming service just like uh, you're watching this service today. And again, that's this Saturday. Uh, then St. John's will find out if we receive a, a teacher uh, for next year. So we invite you to, to participate in that. Today we'll be beginning our service, our special uh, service for Mother's Day as we remind uh, ourselves and we give thanks to God's gift of the mothers that he's blessed us with. We'll be following those sheets uh, that are printed out. We'll be using the page 15 liturgy today and also singing three hymns and I'll mention those as we go through today's service. We worship today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son, to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our first scripture lesson today comes from 1 Kings chapter 17. The lesson here is about the prophet Elijah. God shows his power and his ability to provide for families. A mother and father are wise to put their trust in him. Sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have commanded a widow in that place to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, and bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, 
only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said, but first make a small cake of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make some for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. The jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. This is the word of the Lord. Now we'll join together in our first hymn, number 490. Love in Christ is strong and living. We'll sing the three verses of hymn 490. Our gospel reading today comes from John chapter 14, beginning at verse 1. The risen Savior had two goals. First, to show himself to be alive, and then to prepare his disciples to be able to live life without him. Today, Jesus is preparing us as well, as we know the risen Lord goes with us. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, so that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, 
are not my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And we join together with the whole Christian church and confess our, sa- our faith in the saving triune God as we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our hymn of the day today, number 500. For Christian homes, O Lord, we pray, we'll join together and sing hymn 500. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
This morning we'll consider this lesson from 1 Kings chapter 17. I'll read a couple of the verses again. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. This is the word of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, and you thought you worked hard. A study done a couple of years ago tried to determine how many hours the average mother worked per week. So they, surv they surveyed 2,000 moms with children ages 5 through 12, and this is what they found. The average mom begins her workday at 6.23 a.m. and ends at 8.00. 31 p.m. That means that the average mom works 98 hours a week. Think of that, 98 hours. Here's a little side note. Keep your mom on salary. Do not pay her by the hour. Four out of ten moms said that they felt their lives were a never-ending series of jobs. Just one thing after the next. But perhaps, not surprisingly, many moms also said that it was all worth it. That, in other words, they love what they do. Well, it's good for us to be able to stop today for a few moments and to th thank our moms and to show appreciation to them and maybe to give them a little something and maybe even give them a gift. Because today in our lesson, we'll see how God does the very same thing. He finds a woman who is worn and weary and worried, and he gives her a gift by giving her something else to do. Our lesson today centers around the work of the prophet Elijah, who's serving God's people during a very dark time. There was a famine in the land, there was a famine because there was a drought. And there was a drought because God had turned off the rain. And God had turned off the rain because God's people had wandered from him. And he was trying to get their attention and call them back. But that drought affected everyone. It even affected the prophet. And so this lesson begins by saying, Sometime later, the brook dried up. God had Elijah stationed by this brook where he could at least get something to drink each day, but then the brook went dry. And so God had to relocate him, and he sent him out of the country. He sent him to the, an area north, to the area of Sidon, this little town called Zarephath. And he said, you go there, and there's a, there's a woman there that's going to take care of you. So he goes to the town, and sure enough, he finds the woman, and he says to her, bring me a little uh, bit of water. And as she's going to bring him some water, he says, and please bring me some bread. And now she responds. And this is what she says. As surely as the Lord your God lives, I don't have any bread. Only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. That was it. She had done what she could. She was a widow. She had lost her husband. That was a great loss, especially in those days. She was doing what she could to take care of her family. This drought had hit everyone. It had hurt her and her family hard, and now they were out of food too. But Elijah doesn't give up. He says, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said, but first make a small cake of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me. 
the, the lady must be thinking to herself, didn't you hear what I just said? I don't have anything. I've run out of food. I have a little bit left. We're going to make it, eat it, and die. What a thought, huh? Here, God sends this preacher to her. She's got her last dime, her last dollar, her last piece of bread. And he says, by the word of the Lord, bring it to me. And she must be thinking, what does God want from me? Look at what I've gone through. Look at what I'm dealing with. How can I be thinking of the Lord in a situation like this? You know, she was being practical, right? It, it's good to be practical. You know, when you're a parent, you have to be practical. But there could be a danger in being practical. You know, when you're practical, you, you focus in on the things that you have, what you have at your disposal. That's what she said. She said, I have a few sticks, and I have some flour, and I have some oil. And, and when you're practical, you focus in on the things you have at your disposal. But could you become too practical? So that when you're all focused on the things that are at your disposal, you forget about the things that are at God's disposal. And God owns everything. When we become practical, we focus in on our energy and the little bit of strength that we have. And what can I get done? But can you be too practical? That you forget the strength and power and the things that the Lord can get done? When we become practical, we think about ourselves and our family. We think about how much we love our family. That's a good thing. But can you be too practical that you forget about God's family and how much he loves him, how much he loves them, and how much love is at God's disposal? Is it possible to be too practical so that we lose our focus on God and mess up our priorities? You know, many years ago, I was, uh, finally got an opportunity to talk with this gentleman. He had been going through a, a really challenging time. He had, was having some challenges with his spouse. He had children to take care of. And he was having some pretty serious financial difficulties, too. And, and I, I listened to all the things that he shared with me. And, and he really had a lot on his plate. And, and so I said to him, I said, you know, I, I'd really like to see you and your family you know, come back to church. Come back and, and be surrounded by God's people. Come back and, and listen to God's word. And I'll always remember what he told me. He said, I'm, I'm going to come back to church, he said. But he said, first I've got to figure out my finances, and then I've got to figure out my family, and then I'll come back. And I thought, you know, that just, it sounds real practical, doesn't it? And anybody could have said it. I could have said that too, right? When you're in a really tough spot, say, I just got to use all my energy and work as hard as I can to get these things figured out, and then I'm going to come back, and then I'm going to seek after God, and then I'm going to come to his house, and I'm going to listen to what he says. Take care of the family. Take care of the finances. And then I want to get back to my father. What does this lady do today? Well, the Bible tells us this. She went away and did as Elijah told her. She took a few sticks and the little bit of flour and the jug of oil and she went home and she baked it into bread and she brought the bread back and she gave it to Elijah. And then you know what happened? It says, the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. 
God continued to feed her and care for her and her family and her son and Elijah. There's a great irony in this lesson, isn't there? If she had just followed what was practical, what made sense to her, and she had made that bread and eaten it and given some to her family and her son, it would have been her last meal. But she gave it away. She trusted God and she gave it away and God gave her and her son and her family and Elijah many meals. In fact, he gave him so many meals that those that flour and oil did not run out until it started to rain again. And then God provided for them in that way. Kind of ironic. You know what God did is he made her a promise and she took him at his word. And then he stepped into the situation. And he showed her, look at how much I have at my disposal. Look at how much power I have. Look at how much love I can show to you. And he totally changed the situation. She was worn and weary and worried. But God stepped into her world and he took care of her. And he provided for her and her son and all the people in her household. You know, what a great lesson to remember today on Mother's Day when we're thinking about our families when we're going through some hard times ourselves now in our nation. No, what we're going through today is not exactly the same as what Elijah and this woman were going through in his day. But what is interesting to think about, you know, there is some rationing of food today when you go to the stores and some places are dumping milk out because they don't know where to go with it. And there are questions a bit about the food supply. It really does make one stop and think a little bit. You know, what would happen if? But it's amazing how God continues to provide. And not just provide us with physical food, but to, but to provide us with spiritual food. As we listen today in the Gospel reading, Jesus told his disciples he had completed his work. He had lived. He had died on the cross. He had risen again. He had risen again and died to forgive their sins for those disciples who also were worn and weary and at times worried, sinfully worried. Maybe that's the way we find you today too. Worn and weary and worried. So listen again to the promises of God of what he says and see his power and his love and his ability to provide. You know, as I was uh, thinking through this lesson today, it reminded me of that passage from Psalm 37. Maybe you remember this one where David was speaking. He said, I have been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his descendants begging for bread. David, as he uh, lived, he looked around and he said, whether I was young or old, no matter what's happened, I've always seen that God provides for his people. What a great reminder for us too as we think about our families, as we think about our hardworking moms and hardworking dads, today as we spend a moment to thank them and to thank God for them, for those people that he puts in our lives who care about us, through whom he works to take care of us today, just like he's taken care of us for all days. What a great opportunity we have to acknowledge him today to say thank you to our moms. I'll just close with this thought. I don't know how this lady is going to be celebrating Mother's Day today, but the fact that she's celebrating it at all is a great blessing. She came down with a virus uh, several weeks ago. She was in the hospital, I believe it was about three weeks. Uh, and she said, I was fighting, I was fighting for my life, 
And she said, first and foremost, I want to thank God for Jesus for saving my life and giving me another chance because she said two or three times where I had given up, she said, but God said no. She said it could have been a funeral, but instead God has turned it around for a celebration. I don't know what she's going to be doing with her two daughters today. What a great reminder of God's power to help us when we are at our weakest, even to the point of wanting to give up, that we continue to focus our attention on his word and his promises and trust the things that he's done for us. Whenever you're worn or weary or worried, wait for the Lord and he may give you just one more thing to do. Amen. And we join to pray. Dear Father, we approach your throne on behalf of the mothers whom you have entrusted with the care of your most precious little ones. We thank you for creating each mom with a unique combination of gifts and talents. We thank you for the sacrifice of self mothers give for their children, for the late nights and early mornings, for the short instructions and long talks, for the hands calloused from activities like washing, wiping, scrubbing, mixing, baking, hugging, disciplining, holding, writing, and pouring. May you continue to also grant moms hands for folding, that they may see your power and love and look to you in every need. Keep them safe in the hands of our Savior, Jesus. And today we also pray for the family of Bob and Heidi Erdman following the loss of Sean Vanderway last week. Dear Lord, you know all things, and you are our strength and fortress in times of need. Though there are things we do not understand, you know all things. Grant your strength to the Erdmans at this time of loss. Keep them in your care and remind them of your abiding love. Through each day, let them see your mercy and sustain them. And we also pray for Alan Dekrager as he approaches his recently delayed surgical procedure. Lord, as you have in the past, we ask again your blessing, that you will bless the efforts of the doctor and staff during this coming week. And as it is your will, grant this surgery success and grant Alan healing. As you have promised, continue to watch over him and keep him in your care. Help us all to remember your love and power in every situation and grant us support from your word your promises, and your people. These and all our prayers we bring in our Savior's name, who has also taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our service. We will again be back next Sunday with another streaming service at 9.30 a.m. Our service concludes today with our final hymn, number 505, Love is the Gracious Gift, hymn 505. <laughs>